Hello Grade Sevens, Helen here with your next Natural Sciences lesson. We're focusing today on energy transfers in thermal and electrical systems. Remember, underneath all of our ideas about energy transfers in different systems, we are trying to keep in mind this idea of the law of conservation of energy, that the energy that enters a system and the energy that leaves the system, so there's the energy going into the system, must be transferred to another object or an energy store in that system, and our total amount of energy must stay constant. We might see loss of some energy in terms of heat, for example, but it's not that we're destroying the energy, it's simply being transferred to a different type of energy. Today we're going to look at thermal systems. So we know that a system is made up of different parts that all work together and when we refer to a thermal system we are looking at a system that is based on transfers of heat energy. Now we're going to have to cast our minds back to what we learned last term about particles making up matter and the fact that these particles are moving and that should immediately give you a nice link between the idea of matter and energy. If the little particles are moving that means they have kinetic energy. So the little atoms or the molecules that make up matter have kinetic energy. And the faster the particle moves, the more kinetic energy it has. When those little particles move very fast and you touch the substance, it feels hot. And this is because the temperature of the substance, in other words, the measure of heat energy that the substance has, depends on the kinetic energy of its particles. So remember we learned about changes in phases, we said that a solid can change to a liquid, can change to a gas, all of the same substance, but what we're seeing is less movement, more movement, and the most movement of the little particles in the gas phase. And now think about water as an example. If you touch solid water, it's ice and it feels cold. Liquid water is usually at the same temperature as the surroundings. But the gas, if you hold your hand over a boiling kettle, which I don't recommend you do, but the gaseous state or that steam is hot. So heat energy is related to these little particles and how they are moving. The more the little particles move, the greater the kinetic energy. So let's think about a thermal system and let's talk about energy transfers within the thermal system. Now I'm going to give you a little heads up. When we finished looking at different kinds of energy transfers in different kinds of systems, we're going to come back to heat energy transfers and we're going to re-explore it in a lot of detail. So I'm just covering the basics today because we're going to explore this topic over a couple of lessons later. Thermal energy, and remember when we talk and use this word thermal, we are referring to heat can be transferred from one object to another in a thermal system. When thermal energy is transferred, we call it heat. Remember that in a mechanical system, we would say that forces were at play to move things around. Now we know thermal systems rely on heat energy. So in order for this water inside the kettle to boil, the thermal energy of the water must increase, but it can't 
increase by itself. Because remember, the law of conservation of energy says we can't create energy. That energy that it needs to have in order to boil, that increase in thermal energy must come from somewhere. We must transfer energy into that water. So looking at this very simple thermal system and looking at that picture, can you describe the energy transfers that are happening in the thermal system? Well, what we've got here is some kind of producer of heat or some way of getting heat energy to the water. In this case, it looks like it's a gas stove. And the gas then is a form of chemical potential energy. The gas is going to be transferred, that heat energy is going to be transferred to the base of the kettle. So we're going to see a transfer of chemical potential energy that is present in the gas to the base of the kettle. And the base of the kettle is then going to increase its thermal energy. Why is it going to increase the amount of thermal energy it has? Well, the heat is going to cause the little particles or atoms making up the base of the kettle to move faster. That heat energy or thermal energy is going to be transferred to the water. And the little particles or molecules of water are going to start moving faster. And you actually see this movement when the water starts boiling. And when it boils, it starts moving around. An unboiled kettle, the water is still. While it's boiling, it's moving around. Bubbles of water are escaping to the top. And we even see that some of the water is escaping in a gas form as water vapor or steam. So what do we have here? A whole system of passing heat energy on. Where is the wasted or dissipated energy in this little system? Well, the purpose of this system was to make hot water, boiled water, in order to make tea or to make coffee or soup or something for us to drink or to eat, all right? That was the purpose of boiling the water. There was no purpose in producing the gaseous state of water. So we would say that that is heat that is dissipated and lost. It's still there. It's still heat energy. We haven't destroyed it. We've just transferred it into a, a, a form that we can't really use. If you touched this kettle, you would find that the outside of the kettle gets rather hot. This looks like a glass kettle and that glass will get very hot. So the manufacturers of the kettle put a plastic handle on it and we know that the heat energy, and we're going to see this in our future lessons, the heat energy doesn't move as easily and as quickly through that plastic as it does through the glass. So that plastic handle is an insulator and we can pick up the hot kettle. We couldn't pick the kettle up by the sides of the glass. We have to pick it up by the plastic handle. Now, an electrical system is also going to be made up of different parts that all work together. But instead of like in our thermal system where heat transfers were happening or heat energy was being transferred, now we have the transfer of electrical energy. So here is a very, very simple, what we call electric circuit. Let's describe this electrical system and include all the energy transfers in our description. We're going to start off with our source of potential energy. And what is the potential energy source? In this system, it is going to be the 
chemical energy that is inside the battery. And that energy is going to be passed along the wires of the system, of the electrical circuit. So we're going to see a transfer to the electrons or the little particles that are moving along the wire. We can say that the wire is conducting the electricity or conducting these little particles along the wire. Here our energy was potential energy. The battery is the store of energy. That is our chemical potential energy. But once the electrons start moving, it's no longer potential energy. We have transferred that potential energy into kinetic energy. So we know that electrical energy is a form of kinetic energy. Why? Because we're going to see particles called electrons, but as long as you remember it as particles moving. Now we could switch off that circuit. We could break the circuit by using a switch. But if we switched it on again, those particles would be able to move right throughout the circuit and they would be able to cause the light bulb to shine. And that was the purpose of the light bulb. So these particles that were moving along the wire are going to cause this filament, the filament inside the light bulb. And I want you to think back to when we learned about our different matter and materials. This is usually made of tungsten and it glows when it receives this energy and it starts glowing with light. And that light energy is another form of energy called radiant energy and we can see the light glowing. And that was the purpose of our light bulb. But there is some wasted energy in the system. Can you think of what it is? If you were to touch that light bulb, you would burn yourself. It would be very hot. So there is also wasted heat energy from our light bulb. Thermal and electrical systems we often use together. Right? We combine these systems. So here we've got a kettle that doesn't have a fire or gas light underneath it, but it is connected via a plug to an electrical outlet. So let's describe this system where we're combining electrical systems with a thermal system. What is our input energy? And the input energy is going to be the electricity or let's be more specific. Let's not just say oh, we're going to supply it with electricity. We have got chemical energy in the form of coal and it is going to be made into electricity and we're going to see the kinetic energy working and the output of it is that it's going to heat the water because instead of fire heating the water, we've got now electricity heating the water. What provided the original potential energy up here, potential kinetic energy? It was the coal that was burnt to create or to start off that energy transfer. Remember, we mustn't say energy is created. The coal was burnt and the energy from the coal was transferred into electrical energy. And that electrical energy was transferred to the kinetic energy of the thermal energy transfers that were happening inside that kettle. And we've boiled water now by gas and we've boiled water by electricity. We've spoken about thermal and electrical systems and that's it for today. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, grade sevens.